B is for batteries, body armor, and Bluetooth. And we'll also be talking about Bros and Bosch motors on today's Ask EMBN show. Let's dive straight in. We got this one in from Grim Reaper. How can you tell if the battery is new on the e-bike you've just purchased and does it even matter? Do e-bikes battery have serial numbers? And if yes, would the serial number match a bike's serial number? It, or is there a serial number database you can look at and find the age of the battery? And if your e-bike's acting up or not working properly, is there an e-bike scanner that you can plug in? That, kind of like the OBD, OBD2 scanner that you'd use on a car. OBD2 scanner. Did you mention yeah. serial number in there? Sounded like someone of Star Wars, didn't it? <laughs> uh, and the answer, Chris, is... Basically, for the age of the battery, a lot of the apps now, like on the Specialized Mission Control, can tell you the age of the battery, how many cycles it's done, how many it's got left, things like that. So if it's like a Bluetooth compatible battery, that would be the easiest way to do it. Yeah, I think if you go to any reputable uh, mountain bike, uh, e-bike specialist shop, they'll be able to plug in that battery to mm -hmm. see all the diagnostics on it yeah. and exactly what that battery's actually done. Mm -hmm. And as to the serial numbers, yeah, they do have serial numbers, but they probably won't match the bike. I know it yeah. certainly doesn't on the specialized stuff. Yeah, but I think most batteries are good for a thousand charges. So yeah. if you think about it, if you're doing like 30 Ks per run, mm -hmm. that's uh, 30,000 miles on a, on a on yeah. one battery. That's a lot of bike riding. Definitely so uh, like, you know, we've said many times, is that you know the parts and the bike will probably have worn out, or you'll probably have worn out before before you, that battery's are done. Yeah, and as to the fault and error codes, um, there isn't an actual scanner as far as I'm aware, but the e-bike has like a operating system itself, and it will flash up an error code, and then you can either look online and see what the error code means according to your system, or it will say actually what it is when you link your phone to uh, like the Bluetooth uh, app on your phone. It will diagnose that, and you can confirm what's wrong with the bike. And we've actually done a really cool video on that recently. So the dead e-bike's every person's worst nightmare. You've pushed the power button to turn it on and nothing at all lights up. First up, you need to check the battery level indicator. Press the power button and you should have a row of LEDs light up if you've got it on there, and that should show a fully charged battery. If not, you need to be asking yourself, was that battery uh, in an extreme temperature? Was it stored in the shed and it's freezing overnight because your battery will not charge if it's too hot or too cold. The other things you need to check is the charger. Was it plugged in? Was it even turned on? Was it connected to the battery? All these things are meaning that you're gonna plug a dead battery into your e-bike. Uh, Wookie Wooly asks, can you recommend good body armor that isn't too restrictive or intrusive? 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 Mm. Restrictive? Restrictive. Or Chris. Restrictive. Um, yeah, I think as a minimum, obviously, you just need to wear a helmet and probably full finger gloves. And then if you're going to take it to the next level and step things up, maybe yeah. knee pads. If you're pushing it to the edge. Yeah, taking it to the limits if you yeah. do daily. Do, do take it to the limits, Chris. Of course I do, all do the time. It. Yeah, right. pushing it on the daily. All right. Um, but just remember, you're going to be doing a lot of pedaling on your e-bike, so just make sure those pads, uh, you know, I, I tend to stay away from the really hard shell stuff if I'm riding just normal cross-country style stuff because it allows the pad to be a lot more flexible. I find if you're riding like a hard shell plastic pad, it'll normally chafe as well, it isn't as flexible as those pads. So just make sure you're, you're choosing your armour and tailoring it to the sort of riding that you do. But Chris, the thing is, Wookie Woolley is actually asking, can you recommend any? But there's loads in the market. There's yeah. Dainese, there's Park, there's mm -hmm. Fox, there's Seven. Mm -hmm. There's loads of good ones out there. But you know what I think for me is, do they actually fit you correctly? Because yeah. we're all different shapes and sizes. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. I think it's a case of actually going into the shop yeah. and trying it on before you actually buy it. Because we're large for one company, is like mm -hmm. a medium for another company. So yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a tricky one. And something that you might find comfortable as well in the event of a crash. You know, I've had it in knee pads. I think, oh, they're super comfortable. Are comfortable and as soon as I've hit the dirt the knee pads will be sliding down you may as well have nothing on to is just that, make sure it's good there's a few nothing on is that when you're pushing the edge yeah you know that is <laughs> I don't <laughs> Brian Burnham uh, can you guys do some instruction videos with real people you're real are you <laughs> uh, <laughs> real people that don't know how to do it correctly yeah yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, and I like your lessons on how to, but I feel like I could learn much more watching the mistakes others make mm -hmm. uh, and how you guys guide them to improving. You guys rock. Thanks for all the videos. Thanks, yeah. Brian. Very kind. Thank you. Uh, ooh, real people mm, do it correctly. I mean, yeah, but then again, I don't want to do the things that you do. I don't want to do the things that you do either. Uh, I actually can't do the things that you do. 
So we can't do I it. Can't do some of Brian, things, I reckon we need to get you down here. Yeah, we need yeah. To get you down here. But what's the answer to the question? I think we tend to on a lot of the how-to videos. We do a lot of common mistakes. So that will be from our experience what people actually struggle with doing or the actual wrong things they're doing to do that technique. Um, but GMBN have done one actually with one of the creators, one of the film guys. That was really good. So maybe it's something that we should do on the show. Yeah, maybe I get think in touch. So. Uh, but I'm still not going to be doing those jumps. I'm not going to be doing those big climbs, you do either. Right. Uh, this one in from Michael Towler. Chris, uh, can you read that one, please? Yeah, when your cassette is worn out and only really worn out in the gears that you ride in most of the time, why can't you just replace those worn ones like you can do the chain rings? Did he mention worn out gears there? Yeah, so right. he's basically got a worn out cassette and he wants to replace the single uh, cogs in the cassette. Well, there's a couple of Doable. reasons. Yeah, you definitely can do it. Um, but as we've talked about before on the show, basically all your drivetrain wears at the same rate. So if you put a new cassette onto an old chain and an old chain ring, it's definitely going to skip, especially mm. in those higher gears as well. We haven't got a lot of teeth contact. Um, the other th reason is that it's only really on those high-end cassettes that each uh, cog will pull off the cassette. So you might find if you've got a cheaper cassette, you can only replace normally about the bottom three on there. And if you've got a SRAM unit on there, you're not going to be able to replace any of those because that's all one unit that comes off in one. So a few different reasons, but you can do it if it was quite fresh, but I'd tend to steer away from it. Bottom line, Chris, I think it's about being proactive with your maintenance on your e-bike, yeah. uh, you know, keep it lube and everything. But uh, Doddy's actually done a really good video on this subject. Now, generally speaking, you can get two, sometimes three chains to one cassette in terms of wear. And the reason for that is as the chain wears, if you replace your chain before it gets to a certain point, you will stop the sprockets, the teeth on the sprockets, front and rear, wearing out prematurely. Now, if you think about this, the chain itself is made of pins, and it's got inner and outer plates, and it's got rollers. Now, those rollers need to sit into the troughs between each of the sprocket teeth. Now, if the chain stretches a tiny bit, which it does over a duration of time, it's gonna start wearing the wrong parts of the teeth on the cassette and on the chain ring, which are far more expensive parts of components to replace. So this is why we do recommend having some sort of chain checker. Right, Andrei Biryukov. No, that's Berkakov. It's Berkakov. not, it's Biryukov. Oh, okay. Biryukov. Yeah. Uh, hi, and thank you for all your hilarious, hilarious ways to say hilarious. my name. I've got a high back full 7, 8, 2018 with Yamaha PWC motor. In theory, they should be able to connect apps via Bluetooth, but I struggle to find a compatible app. Yeah. Do they even exist? Mm -hmm. Are there any third-party e-bike and apps that are not linked to a specific motor or e-bike manufacturer? So first up, your bike should connect to the high bike e-connect app, which is obviously available on the app store. That'll have loads of data on there. It's got live tracking. It can see when your bike's moved. It'll do a crash alert as well as a few other things on there. So that's really worth checking out. I think it's recently been updated, so definitely check that one out. Um, I had a quick look on the App Store, just searched e-bike, and there was quite a few third-party apps that will do the same, like tracking and speed and distance, all the usual sort of stuff. So I guess, I guess Andre, or Andre, do you want things such as you know the the wattage from the bike, the mm. wattage from yourself, yeah. your heart rate? I know some some apps can actually mm. do that, you know. Yeah. And um, and even you look at you look at uh, you look at the great bike. Mm. Uh, you know, it's pretty cool. You can actually set your heart rate to the motor. Mm. It's pretty yeah. Cool. I think all these a lot of these things are going to be coming in the future. Yeah, definitely. I think if you want a bit more of like that heart rate and things like Steve mentioned, I'd probably look into getting something like the Garmin Watch or Garmin yeah. app and yeah. the heart rate monitor, and you'll get yeah. all that info as well, as right. well as teaming it up with like the high bike app yeah. should answer all your stuff. Uh, Brian Little, Mike Canivu uses a bro system and it's possible to set the assistant level for each mode in quite small increments. Mm -hmm. uh, this has proven very useful to retune the performance to greatly extend battery range when needed and then to change back to more fun for short rides. Mm -hmm. The question from Brian is, uh, do any of the other e-bike motor and systems provide this level of tunability? Well, uh, not quite the level of mission control on the Specialized, but other, other brands do do it, such as Rocky Mountain or Shimano. Mm -hmm. For example, on Shimano, you can have a custom Explorer or dynamic range yeah. where you, you fine tune things or you can change the way the shifters work mm -hmm. and, and what's displayed on the on the, on the display. Yeah. yeah, so I think Shimano's pretty good. Yeah, Shimano's pretty good, but I think Specialized Mission Control is probably the best and the most detailed one out there. Mm -hmm. and I think on, on that, you can literally do it by 1% on the power assist, whereas the E-Tube Shimano app is all a little bit different. But yeah, there is a wrap up. Brian, there. count yourself a lucky man. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a mission control app video, which I've done. So check this out down here, if you've not already seen that. There's a tune button on my app here. This is worrying me quite a bit. What on earth do you do with that? <laughs> so 
With the tune button is basically allowing you to customize your level and the motor to your personal needs, to your personal riding preferences. Craig, you've got to know what you want though, right? <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. That's yeah. why the bike obviously comes with stock settings mm -hmm. for the three modes, Eco Trail Turbo. Yeah. Those are the settings we really like to ride. Yeah, Alex Lee has been in touch. He says, great content guys, really great. Thanks very much. Uh, should we change the off-road tires when riding in the city from safety's perspective, not comfort? I Absolutely. Recently, yeah, totally. recently had a crash on an asphalt street, tarmac, and broke my right clavicle while riding my Cube Reaction hybrid bike. That's a hardtail with smart Sam tires. tires. Taking a right turn, the front wheel slid down and is down instantly. The road was wet and perhaps with a bit of wet dust and mud on it. Or diesel. What do you think? If I had road tires, could this have been avoided? No, I don't think so. I think you're not going to have... It depends on the type of tarmac. Yeah. There was probably petrol or diesel mm. on the road as well. Yeah. So I uh, think I don't think so. On a, on a nice dry summer day mm -hmm. with uh, uncontaminated tarmac, yes, probably. Yeah. But it's always a bit dicey. Yeah. Um, and I think literally the compound of the tyre as well, like Smart Sam is a bit more of a cross-country race tyre, so it's going to be a harder compound, so it rolls better. You've probably find with a knobbly, soft compound tyre, it's going to bite in a lot more. But as Steve said, probably something on the road, you mentioned mud, combined with wet tarmac, any tyre is just going to slide on that and you're going to be mm. down. I would probably... Get, fancy get in chances, the hills. Get in the hills. Fancy my ch uh, chances on a knobbly tyre over a slick on that. I think a really important part about riding on the streets is actually they are super dangerous as well. Voice you've got, of experience. You've got people standing out, you've got potholes, you've got drain covers, especially in the wet, you really need to take okay. care of whatever tyres you got. You spend a lot of time on the street, don't I you? I do spend a lot of time. What tyres do you use on the street then? Do you Mini use street tyres or do you no, use off road tyres? I've got high rollers. Are you going to contradict yourself here? High rollers. Right, high rollers? Yeah. Right. Tell okay, us about right. some tyres anyway. Tyres, look, I'm obsessed with tyres. They're mm -hmm. probably more towards the off-road off uh, department, but here you go, this is what you can find. Tread comes in an incredibly diverse range of patterns from shallow to deep. In simple terms, the deeper the tread, the better that tire cuts into the dirt. Now, if you don't venture very far from smooth double track, then a shallow tread pattern is gonna be pretty good for you. However, if you really get off into the loam, into that deep dirt, then you do need a more aggressive tread pattern on your tire. Now, if you look at this wet weather tire, you'll see a far greater spread of the knobs on the tire, and that helps to disperse the mud. Toby Dog, MTB. Sorry, Toby, you might not be from North America or Canada or uh, Papua New Guinea, but uh, Chris, sorry. He's saying, I am looking at the Cube Stereo Hybrid 160 race version. Stop looking. Get by it. Buy it. I like everything on the bike, but feel the control panel is dated. Can this be upgraded to say the Levo style of two simple buttons? The current control pad, I, I think, uh, about the buttons need to have a natural feel and great show as always. So the Cube Stereo is yeah. running the Bosch system on it. Well, there's the Kiox, there's mm. the new Kiox, which is the most compact. Yeah. of the Bosch display, so you so can you've stick got, that on there. Yeah, you've got the Purion on there at the moment, so it is as mm -hmm. minimal as it gets for Bosch. Yeah. Um, the other no, one no, is... it's not. That's not. Well, Kiox is. The Kiox, uh, I meant as an all-in-one unit. It's quite small. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Yeah, sorry, yeah. And then the Nyon is, again, a smaller switch unit, but it's an even bigger heads-up display, so it depends it's almost like a want. personal trainer, really, yeah, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's got everything on there. I think it's yeah. even got sat-nav on it, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, everything. There's loads of different options, and it can all be retrofitted, but you need to get that done by Bosch dealer for it still to be all in warranty and get set up properly. There you go. Yeah, old Colin's been in touch. Yeah, old he's Col. saying, my heart... My bike is a high bike Enduro 7.0 with a PWX, PWX motor, 180 mil travel Yari fork. The problem is I'm 50 kilos, so pretty lightweight, and the fork is only using 75% tra uh, 75 travel on massive impacts. If I drop the sag to 30% or more, it feels too soft. And the pressure in the negative chamber is too low, so it sinks in its travel to 160 mil travel without weight on it. What should I do? He's got no volume spaces installed on it at the moment. Good question. So you kind of you kind of covered everything, really. Ticked all the boxes that I would think. Is the fork is the fork working correctly? Does mm -hmm. it need to go back to the dealer? And when you're talking about your massive impacts, are you doing massive impacts like Steve Jones does on those big drops and things like that? Maybe that you're not doing as much as you think the a fork is actually capable of. Um, but maybe take it along to a specialist fork tuner, you know, like TF tuned. It should be getting all this travel, yeah. really, on the yeah, big yeah, impacts. Definitely, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, uh, maybe it isn't working right, or as I say, get it along to a specialist suspension tuner. So you think it's look. down to the massive impacts to you, Chris? Maybe get gonna... Chris Smith on it. <laughs> but then you're not going to weigh 50 kilos, yeah. No. <laughs> anyway, moving on. 
Scott Practico has been in touch. Practico. Practico saying, excellent show as always, gentlemen. Thank you very much. I eagerly await delivery of my new commensal meta power. I'm so excited to Good join work. the revolution. Good work. As a proud citizen of Canada, Canada, my, Canada. <laughs> my meta will go faster than your Euro models. How is that you can buy a huge, statistically deadly car with top speeds well in excess of any statutory limits, yeah, yet yeah. your e-bikes need to be neutered? It seems a bit daft. Uh, it's it's um, a dated system which... Mm. Uh, which goes back to to China actually when it when they wanted to get the e bikes limited and put it yeah it's it's complicated mm. it's complicated but yeah it makes no sense at all yeah. I think it actually comes down to um, comes down to how many watts you can put out on a road bike so you can actually average about sort of 200, 250 watts on a road bike. It mm -hmm. all goes back to this, but yeah. it is, is pretty dated, really. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If, if you're not aware, in Europe, the bikes are capped to 25 kph, and in the States and Canada, it's 32 kph. So Lucky you. Lucky you guys. I and think, do you know what I think? I think 20 mile an hour is actually pretty good. Sweet spot, yeah. It's definitely yeah, good. I think yeah. you can go a lot faster on currently than the UK limit on a standard bike, you know, especially on the flat and downhill. But you can it, easily exceed that limit. But, but it comes down to where you ride, basically. Exactly. And you've done a really cool video on that, haven't you? It's 25 kph. I wouldn't say it's cool. Well, a video about it. So, but check that one out. That's really good. Yeah. 25 kilometers an hour, is it too slow? I think part of the issue here is the fact that we have turbo boost, extra power, call it what you will. And because we have that power mode, we feel compelled to use it. And the thing is, once you do that, it puts things out of perspective rather than into perspective, because once you've been there, you find it quite hard to go back. In fact, I've heard a lot of people say that if e-bikes didn't have turbo mode, they wouldn't be using them. What I think is that where the hell are you riding your bike? So that's it, I'm afraid, Steve. The oh, show is over, the question box is I empty. I really like asking him. There's going to be some more. They yeah. can't be empty. We you can just saved up. them, haven't you? You've saved them till next week. <laughs> but if you guys have got any questions you want to ask us here at Ask EMBN, drop us them in the comments box below. Or maybe place them in the comments box Hashtag below. Hashtag Ask EMBN with your question. Hopefully, we'll get back to you in next week's show. Don't forget to subscribe to EMBN by clicking the globe in the middle. And if you want to stick around for a bit more, check out this common e-bike problems video as well. Really good. We'll see you next week.